John Wayne, the Hollywood legend of westerns, war movies, and everything in between, is one of the most famous and inspirational leads to come out of the golden era of filmmaking. Having worked on over 170 productions, he was a true master of his craft, and he was extremely outspoken about his anti-communist beliefs. As one of the most famous people on the planet, Wayne's public displays of anti-communism were dangerous to those he opposed, so dangerous that Wayne's life had been in danger. Join us as we take a look at John Wayne's dark connection to communism. The Power of Movies It's an odd thing, but it seems dictators absolutely love movies. Gaddafi, the Libyan revolutionary, politician, and political theorist, was condemned by many as a dictator whose authoritarian administration violated human rights and financed global terrorism. Alongside that, he had a channel set up just to play his favorite movie. Kim Jong-il, the second supreme leader of North Korea, led the North Korean government to be known as one of the world's most repressive governments. Virtually every aspect of life is controlled by the government. Kim kidnapped his favorite actors and actresses to star in North Korea's movies. Then he moved into directing his own. Joseph Stalin was the Soviet Union's ultimate censor. While global communism was very much a growing threat, Stalin wanted it to continue to spread around the world under Soviet leadership. He saw how much power and influence films and actors held over large audiences. He witnessed this in the Nazi-German propaganda during the Second World War and used it in himself to further his own personality cult. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Stalin ordered John Wayne killed. When Stalin saw John Wayne's power as a dangerous anti-communist on the rise, he ordered him killed. He did so by allegedly sending more than one hit squad to do the job. He saw Wayne as a threat to the spread of communism, especially in the U.S. It's believed that Soviet filmmaker Sergei Gerasimov told Wayne of the KGB's plot to assassinate him in 1949. While many Hollywood stars play tough on screen, the majority in real life aren't quite as formidable. The KGB assassins were going to find out this wasn't the case with John Wayne. Not willing to let a thing like communist assassins get him down, Wayne and his scriptwriter Jimmy Grant allegedly abducted the hitmen. They took them to the beach and staged a mock execution. While no one knows exactly what happened after that, Wayne's friends have been outspoken about the matter and claim the Soviet agents began to work for the FBI from that day on. But that isn't the only incident. It's been alleged that KGB agents tried to murder John Wayne while on the set of the 1953 movie Hondo. A captured sniper in Vietnam claimed he was hired by Chairman Mao to take the actor out on a visit to troops there. Chairman Mao, originally Mao Zedong, was a Chinese communist revolutionary and founder of the People's Republic of China. Stalin passed away in 1953 of a cerebral hemorrhage. In 1958, his successor, Nikita Khrushchev, met privately with Wayne. In the meeting, Khrushchev informed him that the order for his assassination had been rescinded. Wayne allegedly told his friends that Khrushchev called Stalin's last years his mad years and apologized for his actions. During the entire time that Wayne knew of the price on his head, he refused the FBI's offer of federal protection. Even more impressively, he never told his family. What he did do was move into a house that had a big wall around it. Strangely, in what sounds more like a John Wayne movie than real life, once word got out about the communist plot against him, Hollywood stuntmen, loyal to Wayne, began to infiltrate Communist Party cells around the country and expose plots against him. John Wayne never publicly spoke of the incidents. Head of the Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of American Ideals During John Wayne's years in the limelight, he was famously conservative. This led to him becoming the head of the Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of American Ideals from 1949 to 53. Its goal was simple, fight off fascists and communists. They did this by protecting the American way of life in the media. Wayne's passion in the subject saw him condemning both JFK and Frank Sinatra. So what happened to actors and entertainers who didn't keep their craft or political voice in line? They'd often be blacklisted and barred from work. This included screenwriter Albert Maltz, who wrote The Naked City and Broken Arrow. However, Frank Sinatra was a friend of Maltz, whose documentary on Sinatra actually earned him an Academy Award. Sinatra hired Maltz, and this didn't go down well with Wayne. As far as he was concerned, there was a conspiracy in play. When asked by reporters about Sinatra's ties with Maltz, Wayne gave a sharp and firing answer. I don't think my opinion is too important. Why don't you ask Sinatra's crony, who's going to run our country for the next few years, what he thinks of it? That crony in question was President Kennedy. Sinatra heard Wayne's answer and confronted him about it. Things didn't go anywhere for Sinatra, who understood that the movie business in Hollywood was a tight group. 
He knew one day he'd likely work with Wayne and didn't want bad blood between them. In the end, Sinatra was forced to fire Maltz. The Red Scare, the promotion of a widespread fear of a potential rise of communism, ended up derailing numerous careers in numerous areas. The Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of American Ideals gained a reputation for containing fascists, as well as supporters of Jim Crow laws, anti-Semitism, and the like. Those years were defined by division, even among friends like Frank Sinatra and John Wayne. Anti-communism, not anti-communist. While it's easy to get the terms confused, John Wayne was not anti-communist, but in fact anti-communism. In other words, he didn't like the communist ideology, but he didn't automatically dislike someone simply because they were a communist. Back in the 50s, in the McCarthy-era witch hunts, a promising young actor named Larry Parks admitted under oath he had been a member of the Communist Party. But that wasn't all. He also stated he had renounced the Communist Party. However, he wouldn't provide the names of anyone he knew that were still members. In spite of this renouncement, there were many calls and great pressure from the conservative members of the Screen Actors Guild to blacklist him. Wayne, who at this time was president of the Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of American Ideals, refused to join their call. He believed Parks had renounced the Communist Party and was actually showing great courage in doing so. He said Parks' refusal to name names took great courage, and he refused to call for his blacklisting. He took a lot of flack for this, but in good old-fashioned John Wayne style, he never backed down. Now it's time to hear from you. What surprised you most about John Wayne's connection to communism? Do you believe what they say he did to communist hitmen? Or is that another unproven tale from Hollywood? Let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to Factsverse for more. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.